Hi, my name is Brianna. I'm 41, and I'm here from Seattle today. And this is Financial Audit. Welcome to Texas, Austin, Texas. Thank Very you. nice. What do you do for a living in Seattle? Um, I actually have two jobs. I My full-time job is a bookkeeper mm-hmm. uh, at a small private firm. And my second job is working on a podcast, two podcasts for um, a woman who has two health and wellness podcasts. Oh, what do you do for that? Um, I write her show notes. I do the artwork and then I do a little bit of audio editing and then I upload everything. Oh, very cool. So the bookkeeper job, what do you bring in on a yearly basis with that? Um, right now I'm making twenty five seventy five an hour. So it's about 53,000 and change after. Okay. How many hours a week? Full time. Okay. So perfect. And the podcast, what are you bringing in with that? The different ones? That is a flat three eighty five a week. Okay. For both put together. Mm hmm. Very cool. So that would be about $1,668 a month on average, mm-hmm. when averaged out. Okay, very cool, which 53000 is 4516 plus that 1668 So it looks like... Before taxes, before any uh, withholdings and any stuff like that, $6,000 a month, yeah? That's about right, yeah. Okay, perfect. And then I'm guessing what? $4,750 hits your account? Something like that? Yeah, it's about uh, 1633 every two weeks. Oh, yeah, that was very close. We had payroll hit your statement of 4884 between yeah. the different payrolls, so... Okay, very nice. Living in Seattle off mm-hmm. of basically almost five thousand yep. dollars post taxes and everything. Mm-hmm. How's that? Uh, it's not too bad. Seattle is really expensive, mm-hmm. but um, I'm kind of lucky right now. My rent is still extremely reasonable. Yeah, um, I've been living in my apartment for a really long time, um, and I don't go out too much. Mm-hmm. But it's. Mm. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've I've slowed down. I've slowed down. Um, but yeah, it's not bad with the two jobs combined. I, I feel comfortable. So what is your financial situation overall? Um, well, I have a lot of debt. It's a lot of stuff that I've racked up, um, from a long time ago and I've been slowly making progress over it over time. But just this year is when I started making like a really decent income. Oh, so this is a new, very new yeah, income. Yeah. I've increased my income about $6,000 annually this mm-hmm. year. So now I feel ready to like make good headway and really buckle down. Um, I was not very strict before, but I was trying to do the best I could. So why did you get into the debt in the first place? What did that look like? Um, A lot of irresponsible spending and being young and um, not really thinking about the impact it would have long term, Mm -hmm. uh, honestly. And a lot of just going out and having a good time and not worrying about it. Give yourself a score zero out of 10. Where do you stand right now? Less than a one. Definitely. Okay. So zero, (laughs) zero out of 10. Okay. Interesting. Well, let's see how that stacks up. We're going to start with your debt. We're going to go into that before that you should hit the subscribe button. Trying to get to 500,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. We're so close. We're going to start with the debts. We're going to lay out the situation, what it looks like. Then we'll hit your checking. Then we'll hit savings retirement. See what any of that looks like. This Apple card, I mean, mm-hmm. the previous monthly balance was 1975 If we're trying to get out of the debt, why is the new balance 2300 Why has the balance gone up? You come in here immediately, take me off a little, because <laughs> you, you just said you got into debt because of bad spending, stupid spending, of which this is a big old thick thing of spending, spending, spending that's unnecessary. You're trying to get out of it. The balance was lower than it is right now. Mm-hmm. Why? Um, well, in that statement, um, there was definitely some, um, income creep or what it, lifestyle creep. Yeah, lifestyle, yeah. Yeah, I got, March was the first, was the first month that I started making a little bit more money and I So what, a few extra hundred bucks hit your account a month and you're like, (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Why? I was. I but d- you wanted to get out of debt. Why wasn't that money going to debt? What's the you know wh- what's your mindset around that? Well, I was paying large payments to my debt. I just wasn't being strict about it. I wasn't really restricting my shopping. Do you follow a budget? Let's be real. Do you follow a budget? Then I was not, but now I do. Yes. What's now? When did now start? Like as a week soon, ago? Uh, as soon as I found your channel, actually. When so was that? like mid April. Okay, so we haven't had very long. No. When did this end? Well, this ended at the end of it, April. So let's yeah. see. <laughs> let's see. I hope it shows my spending slowing down. <laughs> oh, I don't remember seeing it slow down. But $46.16 a month, a lot of this is zero interest, isn't it? Yeah, I pay that off um, after the statement comes. I paid off before any interest is charged. Oh, you do? I do. Okay, I did not see that reflected. Okay, so okay, so there's no balance on this card right now? There is a balance, but the previous month's balance has been paid. Do you always do that with this card? Yes. Okay. You don't do that with some other cards, but you do that Correct. with this card. Okay, good, because that would hurt. Which I guess makes sense where this is where all the spending is, but you say you're trying to get out of debt, yet we're going Uber, Jimmy John's. What's T-Mobile Park? Because you go there every two seconds of your life. Uh, that was uh, two trips to the ballpark. Ballpark, bar, ballpark, Amazon, Pizza Mart, Orca, GoFundMe. You need to go fund yourself out of debt instead of giving to that. Shop for monthly th- membership, Apple, Imperfect Foods, Apple, Apple, Uber Eats, Apple, Chipotle, Amazon, Uber, Apple, Uber, go to the ballpark, Apple, go to the ballpark, 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 Apple, Zillow, Amazon, Uber Pass, like you need to be giving them more money. Apple, Metropolitan Cafe, Apple, Pay Range, Apple. Dude, these subscriptions and things you're paying with Apple Pay. It's insane. <laughs> and Uber Eats and Imperfect Foods and Apple and Amazon and Apple. Amazon, Amazon, Klarna, are we financing things? Amazon, Uber, Apple, Uber, Metropolitan Cafe, Uber, Uber, McDonald's, Amazon, Orca, Fresh, Deli, and Mart. That could be groceries. I wasn't 100% sure, but I don't think so because it's $13. It's groceries for $13? Uh, yeah, so convenience people store. Do it here. Okay. Yeah. Uber Eats, Imperfect Foods. That's gross. Amazon, okay. Amazon, Apple, Metropolitan Cafe, Apple, Microsoft, Apple, Adobe Creative Cloud, which... That's for your work, though. That is. Okay, yeah. so that's okay now. And then the pay range mobile. That's laundry. <laughs> that's laundry? We yeah. Do laundry. Okay, that's fine. Metropolitan Cafe, that is not laundry. Apple no. Bill, that is not laundry. Klarna, again, we're financing things and having to pay them off with a credit card. And then Apple, and then Metropolitan Cafe, Metropolitan Cafe, Amazon, 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 HBO Max, Amazon... And an Apple bill. No, you did not slow down your spending. You did not slow down your spending. You went out or made multiple purchases a day that were unnecessary. These are all circles. You see these circles right here? Unnecessary. And that's one page out of like four of them. Um, So what's this? You're coming in here saying you're getting out of debt. You found me uh, mid-April and you started to change things. You didn't get on a budget since then. Yeah, we saw at least a couple weeks of that not happening. What is going on? Um, well, okay, so some of those things are legitimate. Orca is my bus pass. Okay. Um, Imperfect Foods is groceries. What is? Imperfect. Okay. Imperfect Foods. I said that like three times out of the hundred yeah. things I just no, read. No, that's true. Um, I would say of all the things you listed, the, like the Apple purchases, like in-app purchases. Mm-hmm. Which are like every second of your life. Yeah, I do at least one of those a day, but not. It's crazy. That's not crazy. anymore. crazy. Not anymore, well, but we're seeing it reflected there. It's only a couple weeks ago, not anymore. Yeah. So even if you stop for a couple weeks, how are you possibly saying with confidence that it's not anymore? You did it for a couple weeks because you were coming on the show. Yeah, I mean, it is sort of my guilty pleasure when I'm at home and I'm playing the game that I like. I'm- gems? Buying gems? What are you doing? What game? It's um, Angry Birds Dream Blast. You're giving <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month to Angry Birds? Um, I, no wonder that app is still alive somehow. I love that game. I'm obsessed. And you finance two Apple purchases. Yeah, there's, um, there's one revolving purchase on there. That was my Apple Watch. That's 0% APR. 
Yeah. And then that Klarna purchase was something that I needed for my cats that I just financed with 0% as well. There's, why? What's the point, though? Um, I think when I purchased it, I was just low on cash, so I decided to split it up. If you can't purchase it, you can't purchase it. I could have, but You're I just didn't. The only reason 0% finance makes sense on like those Apple purchases that you're making, not the car and stuff, but just the Apple uh, purchases, is if, let's say you're going to go purchase a $2,000 computer. Yeah. But instead, you do the $2,000 computer over 12 months, 0% finance, and then you take the $2,000 that you had to give to the computer, and you invest that $2,000 instead in the S&P 500, for an example. That's where it makes sense. Okay. But where people 0% finance and then spread it across monthly, and then they take the $2,000 that they had in order to get it, they just go spend it on bullshit. And we know that it was just bullshit. Yeah, that's fair. And speaking of bullshit, I mean, there were purchases on here. Like you went to Manor uh, Souvenirs on this card yeah. that you have a balance and you're losing interest on. That was an accident. That was legitimately, I handed them okay. the wrong card. Okay. And then okay. the other purchase You also have on ongoing, right? It's like Emerald City. So utilities no. of some kind? Um, no, that was emergency pet services. My cat... Um, had a bladder uh, situation. Why on the credit card? Because I didn't have the cash. This is why we have emergency funds. This is why yeah. instead of that bull spending that you were doing in there every second of your life, gems, gems to angry birds, you have money set aside and yeah. you have cash to pay for things and you don't have a stupid $6,718 credit card balance. Yeah. You wouldn't have that. Right. You this that would probably be cut in half right now if you did not go insane stupid on that Apple card. Yeah, I realized that um the the emergency pet services was the wake up call for the emergency mm -hmm. fund. Yeah. Um and that card was actually twice as much. Um you'll see on the next credit card I split it to do um 0% APR with a balance transfer. I, yeah, I did card. see that. Well, is that this card? This card you transferred over? Yeah, it went from this card to the other card. So this card no longer exists? No, that's the, what's left on there. I couldn't get enough balance to do the... What was the total balance? Oh, it before? was like 14000 How did you stack up $14,000 in bad credit card debt? Because you were just getting interest Stolen every month. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really sure what I spent that money on. Um, yeah. Yet, yet, you know you have it. Yeah. And you do all that spending. That's the only reason I'm upset at that spending. You can do that spending if you're in a good place. But you are choosing not to have an emergency fund and have to use your credit card in order to pay for a vet thing. You are choosing to have this high credit card balance that has $93.61 in interest sucks from you every single month yeah. because you want to have the pool spending. Do you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So why? Why are you still doing that? Um, and you say you cut back for like a week now, <laughs> but... I Well, this month was a lot better than last month. Um, why I was doing it? Uh, well, I'm trying to like change all of my habits right now all at once. Um around the end of the last year I was going out a lot and then I kind of just decided that um it wasn't good for me you know yeah. and so um I health think, wise probably because a lot yeah. of that stuff is unhealthy yeah. and then two financially very unhealthy yeah so I think what ended up happening instead of spending all that money on restaurants and bars I ended up spending it on shopping and in-app purchases and I didn't even realize I was doing it until much later. <laughs> the interest you've lost on this card this year so far is basically $500. I know. Of which did not have to be there if you were not doing the bullshit spending. Now we do have 0% finance through City. Yes. And, um, and with that, we have a balance of 6339 at the time of this statement. Mm-hmm. So overall credit card is like about $13,000. We have minimum monthly payments here of $63. Now, yes, you're saving some interest because there's 0% finance, but you also had a $215 fee you paid in order to do this. Yeah. Which um, is disgusting. But. I, yeah, I calculated the what I would ended up, what, what I would have paid in interest on the other card. I calculated it and um, figured out that I would save a little bit of money by doing the balance transfer so that was the idea 
behind that. Yeah, no, overall, probably. But just be, this is, okay, I'm okay with some consolidation, 0% and stuff like that when we're trying to get out of a high interest situation. But what a lot of people do is they get into the situation and then they think they've made progress and then they just don't go crazy like they should be in order to get out of the really bad debt. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. And I didn't, I, I, I really couldn't see it. Um, I mean, but I see it now. What is this? That is my new card. Um, I got an Amazon card because I was, um, I, (laughs) I was buying, if you know, if you know, sorry, continue. Um, because I was buying things on Amazon, I opened an Amazon card for the, 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 points or whatever but this will also be paid off without accruing interest you pay this off every month yes i still don't like the idea of you having two credit cards one that's zero percent because you had a transfer from the other card and the other one that's accruing terrible interest and then opening another credit card yeah how have you proved to yourself in any way that you're able to manage this long term because a month maybe okay well okay so my my spending has been completely out of control i own that Um, But with my Apple card, I've had it for almost a year now, and I've not paid a single dime of interest on that. You spent on some travel, 555. More travel, 361. That was to come here. Whole 68. Sorry. I don't even know how to comment on that. And Amazon 44 and Amazon 37. Yeah, it's gross. You don't need to be doing those Amazon purchases. We don't need to be going to Whole Foods of all places. I usually don't. It's the closest grocery store to where I live. So if I need like one or two things, I'll pop in there. And I just try it's not very expensive way to, do to buy the marked up stuff. Um, but yeah. And then the Amazon stuff on that card is like basic home good stuff. Oh, I had to buy a pair of shoes because of fitness for fitness. I'm doing a lot more walking now and I needed something that worked better for me. Now, we have some checking accounts. Yes, that's my main checking account. First of all, I'm confused. The savings started at 100 bucks, and you put in $200, and we took it all out, and now it's zero. Yeah, I see. I, every time I try to put money in savings, I'm like, no, wait, I should spend that on paying my debt down. Well, and it's then, good to have at least a one-month emergency fund. Yeah. Um, so I always go back and forth about what I should do. Do I save money for the emergency fund or should I pay down the debt or should I pay my student loans or what? Um, I did not get a statement for student loans. I sent it in a separate email, I thought. What's your student loans? Um, it's 18000 All federal? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. They're really old. Who'd you get it through? Originally, I don't remember. In a separate email? I thought so. Uh, it should be American Education Services is the lender right now. Are you paying it on right now? Yeah. It's not deferred? No. It's in deferment for a very long time when I was younger. But I can show it on to you on my Federal phone. Family Education Loan Programs. Which I know there was confusion around those with the forgiveness. And didn't the FFELPs like get taken out of those? Um, yeah, when the for or for the whenever the federal whenever the government said that uh, they would pause student loans, I opted not to pause. You opted not to, so they're Correct. federal. Well, I don't. I honestly don't know if I had what? the option. It's on here. Yeah. I have one subsidized, one unsubsidized. So 2,260. Oh, okay. Subsidized, unsubsidized. Okay. So these are federal. They are federal. Uh, $2.62. Why don't you pause it? At least you wouldn't be getting interest. You're getting interest added of $2.62 a day. Why don't you just pause it? It didn't make any sense. Um, because those loans are very, very old, and I want to pay them off. You could pay them off while it's paused. It, what? Oh, I didn't. Not all at realize. five, just over 5% interest, so. What's your minimum monthly payment on these things? Um, 304. 
All right, so add that to the debts, okay. Vehicles? No. What is your car? I don't drive. Oh, city, okay. Yeah, so it's like a good walkable city? Yeah. I'm jealous, okay. Yeah, it's not walkable here. It's too hot. <laughs> well, it's also just not walkable. Mm. It's very car-centric, but either way. No other debts? Um, no. Okay, scared me for a second. Okay, so in here we can have ongoing bills like uh, Verizon and then paying off debts and transferring to Robinhood and tr- paying off credit cards and, well, paying two credit cards, I should say, mm-hmm. and setting things around Zellin, Zellin at 225. Yeah. What? That was, <laughs> don't, oh my God, you're going to yell at me. Um, that was for like a psychic reading. Why? Because it was interesting. Sure, $225 interesting when we're yeah. losing $500 so far this year in interest? Yeah. It was just, I couldn't, I really wanted to do it because it was Cool, congratulations. <laughs> what? Yeah. Are you going to put your wants over everything forever? Um, n- No, not anymore. Mind you, <laughs> whatever, doesn't even matter. And then there's Puget Sound and... You paid twenty two dollars for, and then you PayPal'd out nine eighty five as well. Yeah, the um, that account just gets a few bills and uh, credit card payments, yep. and then I do all of my spending through Apple Card and Stash. Because yeah. you have like a checking account in Stash, of which has a zero dollar balance. Yes. What do we do? We had Netflix, and we had Amazon. 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 What the. F- those are those are household things like subscription things, cat food, cat litter. Um, they better be better than what you can get in the grocery store. I can't see. I don't know. I, who knows? They are. They are financially better. Yeah, yeah, it's better price. I the cat food that I was buying, yeah, I couldn't even get in the. So stash store. really, you just have two accounts with basically a thousand two hundred dollars in them. Yeah, each one has about twelve hundred dollars. And you put them in like, kind of like U.S. large stock. Um, it's a bunch of random stocks. It is, but it's just, yeah, it looks like you did like a large cap. Okay. Other than that, it's really nothing else. It's like a billion pages of this because it just shows every individual stock that you have like a cent in. Yeah. For a while I was using the stash checking account and they would give you like stock back on certain purchases that'll just match it to your purchase. Then you have $200 in Robinhood, which I don't really get the point of this anyway. Yeah. I was some woman's health thing and... Treasury bonds and QQQ. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> uh, and then Vanguard US. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't understand but the first two. I under- I actually cashed that out and just spent it on credit card bill. Good. Good. Which is what I would have told you to do anyway. Yeah. That's your retirement? You have nothing else? No, nothing else. Except for um, my job just started to offer a 401k, so I've made one contribution. Oh, so you have $3,000 in retire- your net worth is negative. Yes. <laughs> you have th- you have a ne- in your early 40s. That scares me. I know it terrifies You've me. You've lost the two best decades of your life mm-hmm. for income and investment compound growth. Yeah. From it's here has been scaring me for a very long time. If it's been <laughs> scare Again, I need to I I need to understand your mindset if it's been scaring you for a very long time. Yeah, we saw all that bull at the first statement we've looked at, I don't care if you're scared because you don't react to it. You don't possibly change things. Yeah. How are we going to do anything here going forward if that is what it's looked like? I've been scared for a long time and then I just spent all my money. Yeah, to be completely honest, it's it's like so scary that it, it, I've the only way to deal with it is to push it out of my mind and then... Well, what does that accomplish? What in any world does that accomplish? Do you see th- seek therapy? Um, no, not right now. But um, I am doing some like self help stuff. All right, therapy. Yeah. Therapy. Do therapy. It's better. We basically have thirty two thousand dollars of debt. Yeah. Okay, so let's put together a plan. But again, with what you've done. Historically, when you've realized things are bad, if we put together a plan, is this even going to help? I'm honestly very mm-hmm. skeptical. No, I am so tired of paying these same 
credit cards and student loans. I'm so tired of it. Um, I if I had thirty two thousand dollars in cash right now, I'd pay it immediately. What's your rent? Uh, it is twelve twenty five at the moment. In a few months, it'll be going up to thirteen hundred. Okay, that's what we'll put it at. Okay, thirteen hundred utilities and internet. Um. So gas, electric, inter- internet, trash. Gas is 20, internet 60, um, water and trash is included. Electric, on average? Um, uh, Into the mic, please. 90, $90 a month. It's every other month, and it's about 180 every other month. Okay. $170 for utilities, your phone, your Verizon thing, I think I saw 120 Car ins- oh, you don't need car insurance. Health insurance that comes out through work? Yes. Before? Yes. Cool. I'm giving you an additional $200 of therapy. You're going to start doing that immediately. Okay. And then I Once have- every other week is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, my bus pass is 100 Okay. Anything else you can think of? Um, giving you groceries of 300 Yeah. Let me. Oh, I need pet pet supplies. Is really expensive right now because of. I'm giving you a hundred. I can't do a hundred. I have why at least two hundred. Why? Because my cat is on special food, and I have to feed them all it because they won't feed separately. Put them in a room. Will they eat? No. Are they grazers? Yeah, big time. And then, fine, I'm cutting your groceries to 250 It's a sacrifice can, you're making. I can do that. I'm cutting your household items to 75 Okay. To keep it going. Yeah. Like toothpaste and toilet paper and yeah. hand soap and shampoo, all that stuff. We're not going crazy. Not going crazy on makeups, haircuts, anything like that. Not until we go out of debt. Any other ongoing expenses you can think of in your life? Um, let me check my spreadsheet. Just so we don't miss anything. And by the way, no, seven hundred thirty-one dollars of going out to eat and stuff. What you did in that statement we saw? Yeah. No, is that, that is not a part was? of it. Yes, it is. Oh God. Um. No, that should be everything. Yep, that's it. We saw one hundred seventy six dollars of subscriptions. You're canceling all of them. What Netflix, Netflix, HBO, other subscriptions. They're gone. I can't have Netflix. You cannot have Netflix. <laughs> all right. If you have time to watch Netflix, you have time to work and I get do, out of this debt. I have two jobs. Congratulations! If you have time to watch Netflix, you have more time to work. Okay. Do you not understand how bad credit card debt is and how it's holding you behind? Do you not understand how bad it is to have a negative net worth? Yeah. At uh at forty one. Do you understand how bad it is that you have three thousand dollars saved for retirement at forty one? Yeah. I have a contingency plan for retirement. What? It's my best friend. She has a pension and VA disability, and she said I could we could get married. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the real world, no. Emerald City, what's that again? Um, that was the that was my pet emergency services. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So let's see what your budget adds up to. Again, okay, let's go through it again. Thirteen hundred for rent, one hundred seventy dollars for utilities and rent, one hundred twenty for phone, two hundred dollars for therapy, one hundred dollars for bus pass, two hundred fifty dollars for groceries, two hundred dollars for pets, seventy five dollars for toilet paper, other supplies. This brings your minimum required to. Ooh, we got to do debt plus four oh eight for debt. Of course, add that in there. Two thousand eight hundred twenty-three dollars. What you need to survive, you bring in six thousand dollars. The fact that you have debt is inexcusable at this point. The fact that you haven't been making more progress on this debt is inexcusable and actively upsetting for me. The fact that I saw all that bull- spending and you've barely put anything towards debt is disgusting. That can no longer be a thing. No longer be a thing. You have at least three thousand extra dollars. Your needs category is under 50% of your income. 
Yeah. And that's rarely seen here. You're in a position where there's no excuse for this to exist. Well, I at mean, this point, that is new. It is new, but you should have been making more progress than we've seen. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> dropped the ball. I've been dropping the ball. There's for no about excuse to not see the progress we've yeah. seen. So, we're going to say you have $3,000 extra, give you a wiggle room of like 150 bucks there. Three thousand dollars is what you have extra on a monthly basis. Woo woo woo. Let's go. Three thousand dollars. What do we do? Well, next month you set that three thousand dollars aside in a high yield savings account. Don't even let it be in that uh, account that's connected to the same bank as you're checking because I don't want you okay. to see it. Okay. That's set aside. That's what you need to survive just in case you lose your job for a month while you go find something else to do. Just scrape, scrap everything. Then $3,000, and you're, of course, making minimum monthly payments on debt, so this has happened. That's mm-hmm. cooked into the budget. $3,000 goes the next month, month number two, to the Verity. 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 Yeah, Verity. Whatever. Uh, payment thing. $3,000. Boom. Month number three, $3,000 goes to it. Boom. Okay. Month number four, uh, about $1,000 goes to it, and it's paid off. No more interest is accruing. Yeah. It's incredible. Now... Because that city will be interest-free for a while, and the student loans are at 5%. What we're going to do is $3,000. What are we in? Month number four at this time? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, month number four. Almost $2,000 goes to city. Uh, Next month, month number five, $3,000 goes to city. And then $1,500 goes to it in month number six. City's paid off. Okay. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Because you're in a bad situation retirement-wise, and the student loans are 5%. We're minimum monthly paying the student loans until they're gone. And everything else that you would put towards them, we're investing because we need to start catching up. Okay. And the average market at 8% or average S&P 500 of 10%, and I'm Mm -hmm. not going to give investing advice or even say what I'm invested in for legal reasons, that beats 5% any and every day. Yeah. And those percentages aren't like, okay, you're going to make this this year. No, that's what it takes, all the down years and up years combined. So if your dollar cost averaging as in investing on a consistent basis, you should, no promises, blah, 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 blah. That's <laughs> what the stock market averages 8%. So. Yeah, if the economy doesn't collapse. <laughs> no, I get that trust me, that 8% takes into account many economic collapses. That's it took in uh, economic collapse of after the roaring twenties, that took the economic collapse of the housing crisis, mm-hmm. and yet on average, we have seen an eight percent gain in the overall stock market. Okay, there, and for I, the S and P five hundred, we saw the housing crisis. Mm-hmm. So, and we still see ten ten point so, something percent with dividends reinvested. So, pay off both the credit cards and then start investing. I have yep. a couple of things that I would like to do within the next one to two years. Okay, what? Um, well, the first thing is that I'd like to get out of my apartment and get into a different one. I would like to move. Um, I've lived in my apartment for 12 years. It's not a good place to live for me anymore. Why? Um, it's kind of a, I don't want to say it's a, but, um, the neighborhood is going south and it's just, um, well, here's the thing I can have you. If you follow, if the utilities stay relatively similar, the phone stays similar, the therapy stays similar, bus pass stays similar, grocery stays similar, pet stays similar, toilet paper stays similar, uh, and once we get rid of the debt, well, we're going to have an extra $100 because student loans are still going to be there. I can have you put an extra $300 towards rent and you'll be fine. $300. Okay, it's like 1600 then? Mm-hmm. You can go to 1600 okay. I'd be okay with that unless you increase your income. But again, needs stay at 50% or less. Sure. Uh, The apartment that I'm looking at is 1,900, but... Can't do that yet. Well, I know. I know that. Um, Can't even do that when the two credit cards are gone. Unless my income increases. Unless your income increases, which which it should. Yeah. Over, you know, a year, two years, you know, Mm -hmm. we should get those annual increases, life cost of living at least. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually having... But the rent will also go up in that time. I have a few projects on deck for the podcast that are going to bring in some extra money as well. Good. So as long as all your needs together are budgeted at 50% or Mm -hmm. less of your take home, rent is included in that needs category. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Do not cut things like therapy in order to do that. No. I will not accept that. Neither should you. Either way, okay, so at the end of six months, we have $3,000 saved up on the side. We have the two credit cards paid off. At that point, 
Then three thousand dollars with three thousand. We're saving up to eighteen thousand dollars. You already have three thousand dollars saved up. So divide that by three thousand dollars. That'll be another five months. So a year from now, we're going to say you'll have two credit cards paid off, a fully funded emergency fund, which I'm guessing is something you've never had in your life. Correct. Which is going to be incredible. I you're going to see they existed for <laughs> a long time. Well, you're going to see that when these emergencies pop up, you don't open credit cards to do them. You don't use credit cards to do them. Mm -hmm. You take it from the emergency fund, then you put it back in there as soon as you can. Okay. It's awesome. It's like the greatest thing ever. Um, emergencies are not scary anymore. Right. Uh, it would be nice to have that in case my cats decide to explode again. Yeah. Um, and also, I, I'm at some point in the future, I'm going to need to buy a new laptop. The one that I have now is very old, and it's starting to become obsolete. I can't even update the programs I'm using right now. Okay. So, again, here's what we're doing. In a year from now, mm -hmm. a year from now, we have the fully funded emergency fund, and you need your laptop for work, correct? Yeah. Um, if during that time the laptop breaks, only if it strictly breaks, yeah. we can pull from the emergency fund to take care of it because that is important for your livelihood. We can do that okay. at that time. Because, again, every single cent of our money that is not in our needs category, which is a stripped down needs, mm -hmm. is going to pay off the two credit cards and then save enough to fully fund an emergency fund. Okay. So we can pull from what we have for the emergency fund there to get that only if it breaks. Right, it's it's currently breaking, but I'm being very gentle. Be with very it. gentle. Think yeah. of a repair shop as well yeah. as a possible option. We don't want to do that forever, but we can pull that right now. Three thousand dollars set aside is most important, and then paying off the two credit cards is most important. Okay, and then the money that we're saving off for the emergency fund at that point. So within at least you know starting in six months, you know mm -hmm. you're saving up for the fully funded emergency fund, and then we can take some from that if it breaks fully to get a new laptop. If it doesn't, and we do like a minor repair or something like that, in a year, what we can do from now is, again, 50% of your income, $3,000 goes to your needs. Mm -hmm. Then, because you have to play rapid catch-up, rapid catch-up, we are putting a minimum 35% of your post-tax, $2,100 a month to mm -hmm. retirement. I'm good with that. A month. Now, you're also going to be uh, contributing up to the max, uh, up to the match of your 401k. There's currently no match, but that is in the pipeline. Okay. Then you're maxing out your Roth IRA, $6,500 a year okay. or whatever it goes up to uh, on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. Then everything else in order to get us to a minimum $2,100 a month is going in to your 401k. Okay. I have some questions about that as well. Yeah. Um, my... The 401k program just started. There is a Roth 401k option as well. Mm -hmm. Do that one. Should I do both? No. So there's really no reason for, because Washington State doesn't have a state income tax anyway. I don't see any reasons for you to try to minimize your taxable income in retirement form when the growth that you're going to receive on the other end of a Roth IRA would be much better to get tax free. Okay. So. Max out the Roth IRA, $6,500 a year, and then put as much in your 401k as you can okay. in order to get this. But I am still going to give you 15%, 15% or more if you cut down your needs. Because mm -hmm. most important comes investing. Yeah. And then you can cut down your needs, but max out at 50%. But if you cut it down, 15% will go in this 50, 35, 15 rule sure. to fun. Okay. So you can have fun again. Woo, yeah. it's exciting. Now, a part of that can be getting a laptop. Cool. In a year. Yeah. So you can put 15% aside for a couple months, get a laptop. Mm -hmm. But 15% goes to needs. Cut 5% from your, or 15% goes to wants. Cut 5% from your needs somehow. And. I don't know how I do that. It's pretty bare bones right now. Again, increase in income. That's true. Then you can have 20% go to fun. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Does that under, do you understand how that's mm -hmm. laid out? Yeah. So let's see. We had 4,000, or sorry, 6,000, 35. Okay, so 2,100. In a year from now, when you're 41, going to retirement. Now, I want to lay out what this looks like. We're going to use the average stock market return of 8%, and we are doing $2,100 a month. Starting with 3000 so that's all that's going to be in there. 
for you're gonna go to 65, let's say. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing. 23 to years. Work longer if it. I'd rather you not, but oh, well, this is just for an example. If you go to 65, yeah. okay. And Social Security, who even knows? We can't rely on that. Two thousand one hundred hours, eight percent, starting with three thousand hours, twenty three years, gets you to sixty five, one point six seven five million dollars. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Sounds very nice, but after you account for inflation, it'll be uh, one about one point one million dollars in today's money. Okay, that's doable. Now, what you can do with that? Then is I get to go crazy on the shopping, right? Because I'm old and I'm the end is near. What you can do is stretch <laughs> that over to like give yourself like a hundred. So it's a million bucks divided by that many years. You can live mm. off of that. So it's drained by 100. Mm. Or what you can do, and this is if you want to pass money on, is you can withdraw 4% from it a year and live mm. off of that money because it'll at least maintain. And that would be about $40,000 a year. Yeah. In today's money. Yeah. So does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And that's where we want to get you to at a minimum. Now, yeah. of course, as income increases... The dollar amount that you're investing increases, which helps that snowball all the way up. Yeah, so keep it at 35% then? I wouldn't go less than 35% for where you're at in your life because we need to start doing emergency Mm -hmm. mode. Because this is why it's important to start investing when you're younger. When you get to the point where 41 is not old by any means, but when you get to the point where you're in your 40s and you've lost those two best earning years of compound growth or Mm -hmm. earning decades, you have to play catch up. Yeah. When you start at, at... Mid 20s for investing, you can do 20 percent, maybe even 15 percent. But I mean, I'd rather 20, but you have to do minimum 35 percent. Yeah, honestly, this is the first time in my life where I even thought saving for retirement would be possible. Here, yes, here's the exciting thing we've done the negatives six months, you're out of the stupid credit card debt. Yeah, a year, you have a fully funded emergency fund, you only have some student loans that are at a relatively low interest, and we're starting to save for retirement. Okay, 65, you're able to retire. That's something you've never thought was possible. You never thought no. an emergency fund was possible. No. You probably never even thought getting out of debt was possible. No, your I just life that's can how be people incredible. lived. <laughs> yes, well, it is how people live, yeah. but it's not how you're gonna live anymore. But that only works if the bull we saw yeah. does not exist anymore. You follow the tight budget and then you live off of that 50% on needs, 35% on investing, 15% on fun after you have the fully funded mm-hmm. emergency fund. This only works if you follow those principles, those rules, or else you are f- I will. I mean, the thought process now is that um, I might not have fun for the next year until my emergency fund is funded, but I've had two decades of fun spending to (laughs) those memories will just keep me warm as I'm hanging out in my house by myself. Um, And again, you can have, you can have free fun. There's there's nothing free in Seattle. (laughs) Well, I mean, you could just like walk the market. Yeah. I mean, you just walk it and just just enjoy the city and just like, I love going to parks and stuff like that. That's my free fun. I take my dog on walks and stuff and then get some people to take you on dates. (laughs) Yeah. Get some people to take you on dates. I think I'd rather stay home. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> but that's a good way to go out to eat without paying for it. Yeah. Get people to take you on dates. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's the plan. I hope you follow it. We'll do a checkup, but any final thoughts? Um, just, uh, just that if anyone out there is watching this and they are kicking the can down the road like I did... Um, this is where you end up being negative thirty thousand dollars net worth at forty one. So, don't do that. It's not worth it. She definitely has a way to get out of this. It's just buckling down for only a year. What's a year for the rest of your life? I mean, we'll see. We will do a follow up episode in a year. We already talked about it, so she better do it for now. Her Hammer Financial score, she was pretty spot on. Spending within the statements that we saw, she, that should all be going to debt. She was overspending, going crazy every single day on gems and crap. Zero out of ten debt. It's not the craziest debt by far. Three out of ten, still not good, but three out of ten retirement way behind for her age and just getting started one out of ten emergency fund there's nothing zero out of ten real estate not even in the conversation not yet could be in like five years zero out of ten for now though that aggregates down to a point five out of ten 
If you want a free $5, sign up for Acorns using the link in the description below. If you use my link, that gives you a free $5 and it gives me a free $5 and we all win. And don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Thanks.